Okay, so this is going to be our lesson for P.3. And in this section, we're just starting off slow and we're just going to kind of uh, go over some of the stuff that you may or may not have seen already in your, um, what was the class before this one, the 410 class, okay? So if you took the 410 class, you might have seen this section already. It probably wasn't this section number, but the topic you might have already seen. Um, or if you came in from high school and just happened to test into this class, you probably have already seen this section as well. But I personally wanna make sure that everybody's on the same level as we keep going, okay? So I am gonna go backward a little bit just to cover this stuff. Um, so in this section, it's a short one. We're literally just gonna go over like definitions and vocabulary. Then we're gonna go, um, basically recover or just to jog back your memory, the multiplication of polynomials, okay? And then there will be some practice problems that we can try. So for the most part, polynomials are, here's two examples of polynomials. The first, actually three examples, one, two, three. This first polynomial before the first comma has two terms. And terms are separated by pluses and minuses, okay? So, so there's a plus sign there. So I've got two terms, 2x and then 5, right? Whereas this polynomial has four terms. I've got the 3x to the fourth, then a negative 7x squared, then a positive 2x, and then a positive 4. And then finally, the last one has got three terms. Notice that even though there's two variables here, there's no plus or minus in the middle separating them. Okay, so this is all one term right here. And then you've got a minus. So this negative x, y is the second term. And then finally the plus. So this positive three is the third term. Okay. Um, and it does tell us that the first two polynomials, these two guys here, they are polynomials in terms of x and x only. So notice that the only letters in these two polynomials are x. Some of them have exponents and some of them do not, right? Then you've got the third polynomial, which is in terms of x's and y's. So you've got two different variables in there, x and y, okay? Now for polynomials that are in terms of just x, so things that look like this is typically what we're gonna deal with in this class. Um, those are the ones we're gonna concentrate on. And when you're concentrating on those, every single term has this form, okay? You will always have a number in the front, then your x variable, and then an exponent, okay? This number in front, they've called it a. A is called the coefficient. So you're gonna hear me say that word a million times throughout the um, semester. And that's just referring to the number in the front of the term, okay? So coefficient is just the number in front. And I do use those words interchangeably. I will say coefficient. And then if I hear crickets, I'll say the number in front <laughs> just to jog back your memory, okay? Um, this one, I don't really like that they use this word degree because it will be an issue later when we get X and Y. But really that guy upstairs, we know him as an exponent, okay? I'm gonna talk about that word degree in a little bit when we get to the next page. But it's real, it's scary to use the word degree here because then it might confuse you later, okay? So I always just say, if you have a term, it's always gonna be in this form. It's always gonna have a coefficient and it's always gonna have an exponent. Now, some obvious ones are like three X to the fourth, right? That is very obvious. You can tell that this is the coefficient and then you can obviously tell that that's the exponent, right? Super easy to tell. But when you get to something like this, it's a little bit more difficult. It is obvious that this is the coefficient, but what is the exponent here? There is zero. one. It's not zero, almost. It is something like that though. How many X's do you see? One. Just one. Anytime X is completely by itself, it is a one exponent, okay? Always, always, always. I will note in the future, I will always do this. 
is invisible, right? So I always rewrite in the invisible one, okay? But that's super important to know is that when it's just X, it is X to the first power, okay? The other one that's tricky is this four. That one's the one that has the exponent of zero because you don't see any X's, right? There's none there. So this one is the same as saying X to the power zero, okay? Again, it's all invisible, so I use little dotted little points to draw in the invisible stuff, okay? So this is my exponent here. That is my exponent there. And of course, that number in front is called the coefficient. Now, typically, I can't spell, but you get it. <laughs> um, typically, when you have the number just like this, it's always called a constant. Because it really doesn't matter what x is, like x could be 5, x could be negative 1 million. It doesn't matter what x is. This value here will always be 4 right? Whereas in an expression like that one, if x is 5, then the value of this is 10. If x is negative a million, well, then the value of this is negative 2 million, right? So when it doesn't have any variables, they're called constants, okay? So just a bunch of vocabulary, just to make sure we're all um, on the same page, okay? Now we're going to get to the next page, and they will start talking about degree in just a little bit. So for this one, it gives us the polynomial, and then it's telling us to give them all of the coefficients. Now you'll notice here that it goes from x cubed to x squared. It skips over the regular x's, x to the one powers, and then it goes straight to the constants, which are x to the zero powers, okay? So what they've done is to kind of make it more obvious for you is they've rewritten it but they filled in the missing term. And since you did not have any x's in here, notice how they write it, they write zero x, right? So just to let you know, all of the polynomials can be written from the highest power all the way down to that constant with no, x, no x's at all, okay? And that's called descending order when it does that. When it goes from the highest and it keeps going lower and lower and lower in exponent, until you get to no x's with no exponents, right? So once it's written like this, all expanded, then you can take those coefficients. This one is a positive two. They wrote it with a plus minus, that's unnecessary. I could have just left it as negative five x squared, but the coefficient is a negative five, okay? Here, where is that? That's a positive two. And here, even though it says plus one, that's a positive one, okay? But anywhere you see the minus, it's actually a negative five as the coefficient. Then the next coefficient is of course a zero, and then the last coefficient is a one. And again, you can put the invisible stuff in if you want to, so that you can remember that every single term is, has a coefficient, an X and an exponent, okay? All of them. Oops, I'm moving my camera here. Okay, so by definition, they are going to decrease like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to concentrate on the term that has the highest exponent. So this guy is gonna be the highest exponent. And when you do just zoom in on just the guy, just the term with the highest exponent, that term right there is called the leading term. Because it is the term with the highest exponent. So then of course, its coefficient is called the leading coefficient. And so it tells you that that number in front right there, that's called the leading coefficient. And then because this is the highest exponent, that is why this guy is called the degree. Okay. So the degree isn't necessarily the exponent on each individual term. It's only the exponent on the term that has the highest exponent. And I'll give you some examples in just a second. 
Okay. When you have two variables, it's a little bit more tricky. So here's a little bit more definitions. It says with one, two, and three terms, if you have one term polynomial, it's called a monomial. If you have a two-termed polynomial, it's called a binomial. And then if you have a three-term polynomial, it's called a trinomial. So all three of these are polynomials, but they have specific names when it's just one, two, or three. Four and up, they're just gonna always be called polynomials. And then remember, we talked about how you write it with descending powders, powers of X. When you do write it that way, it's called standard form. Okay, so if I had a, a, a polynomial and I was writing this, I think I had one in there like that. I'm just going to add in an extra variable. This is in descending order. I'm missing a cube, but as long as these are decreasing every time, this is in standard form. Okay, it's okay if people are missing, just as long as the powers are going down, they're decreasing. Here we go. It says a polynomial that has all zero coefficients is called the zero polynomial. And you don't have to write all the terms. You can just write zero. OK, but essentially what it's telling us is that zero is the same as zero times x to the power who knows what. And then you're going to decrease that power and then you're going to decrease it some more all the way until you get to like x to the third and then x to the squared and then x and then your constant okay zero is basically has an infinite number of terms but all the coefficients are zero okay we don't ever write this this is just too much right so we just write zero this is important because in the future you will have to manipulate polynomials and so knowing that zero by itself could represent any of these terms or all of these terms is helpful because then you can kind of like magically throw in a zero and then turn that zero into positive two and negative two, right? Isn't positive two and negative two zero? And so that will help us to kind of manipulate some things later. So knowing the fact that a constant zero can be written as variable terms with the zero coefficient will come in handy in the future. Okay. Um, also realize that no degree is assigned to the zero polynomial. Since we write it like this, it looks like a constant, doesn't it? And we already know that with constants, there is an invisible X, but the power of it is zero. Okay. So that's why they're telling you it has no degree. If the degree is zero, then there's no degree. Now for polynomials in more than one variable, that's a little bit trickier. If you want to find the degree, if it has more than one variable, you actually have to add the exponents of the variables together. So remember that one polynomial that had a term like this? If I wanted to figure out the degree of this, I would have to add both of those exponents together. Okay, so the degree of that term would actually be four. And then if you want to know, so we know how to find the degree of each term. If you want to find the degree of the whole polynomial, it's basically the highest degree of all the terms. Okay, and there's an example on the next page. So for instance, this one here, it says the degree of this particular polynomial is 11. Why though? Let's look at the first term. What is the degree of the first term? You can come off mute. Nine. Mm -hmm. Add those exponents together. Good. Anybody else want to tell me what's the degree of the second term? This one's trickier. Is it two? Because mm -hmm. there's an invisible one and an invisible one, right? So mm -hmm. yes, the degree for that middle guy is two. And what about the last term? 11. 11. Mm -hmm. You got it. And so if I want to know the degree of the whole polynomial, you're basically just taking the biggest one, 
Okay. And so since 11 is bigger than nine and two, that's the degree of the whole polynomial. Okay. And again, this is going to come back to us probably not until unit three, but it is going to come back to us knowing this degree. Knowing that information is going to help us out um, to graph, actually, when we get to unit three. Um, now, it says the leading coefficient of the polynomial is just going to be the coefficient of the highest degree term. So in this particular polynomial, the last term was the term with the highest degree, right? So if I want to know the leading coefficient, I'm not going to rewrite that. I'm just going to underline it. If I want to know the leading coefficient of the whole polynomial, I essentially have to figure out what his coefficient is. Anybody know what his coefficient is? Negative one. Yes, there is always a number in front, but if it's not visible, it's automatically assumed to be a one, okay? So if you don't see a number in there, you can just draw in the one. Just like if you don't see exponents, you can draw in the ones, okay? So yes, this leading coefficient of the whole polynomial is gonna be negative one because of that minus sign, good. Now it says expressions are not polynomials when a variable is underneath the radical, kind of like this or like this, um, or when a polynomial expression with a degree greater than zero is in the denominator. What does that mean? That basically means if you have a variable downstairs in a fraction, but the power is positive, okay? So if I had something like this, this power is a positive one, right? Or if I had something like this, it could get even more complicated. I mean, it could be anything, okay? But basically, if you have something with X in the denominator and it has a positive exponent, okay? That would make it not a polynomial. These guys with the radicals are called radical expressions, and we will talk about those in this unit. These fraction kind of guys where you have polynomial on the top and a polynomial at the bottom, those are called rational expressions. We'll get to those, I think, in unit two, okay? But just know that if you do have radicals or you do have fractions with Xs at the bottom, those are typically not polynomials. The only one that they don't talk about is this guy with a negative, because that is a polynomial. I don't know if you remember exponent rules, but in our exponent rules, this is actually equivalent to x to the positive two, which is a monomial, okay? So you have to be very careful. Only if the x's downstairs have positive exponents, it is not a polynomial. So now we're getting to the good stuff. This is the stuff that I wanted to talk about because this is going to lead us into everything else that we do throughout the semester. We definitely need to remember how to multiply because that's gonna be one of those skills that's just like automatic, okay? So as you keep going through our course, you're probably gonna be multiplying like a million times. And that process needs to come natural and like quickly, okay? You don't wanna be spending too much time trying to multiply. So to find the product, product is just a fancy word for multiplication, okay? But to find the product of two polynomials, um, you can use left and right distributive distribution, okay? Left distribution is when you take what's on the left side and you distribute it, okay? And then right-hand distribution is when you take what's on the right-hand side and you distribute it. So this is actually going to be a right-hand distribution. Because what they're taking is they're taking this whole thing and they're multiplying it by that guy and then they're multiplying it by that guy, right? So you notice you have 3x times that whole thing over here and then you have negative two times this whole thing over here, okay? That's using right-hand distribution. Another way that they've, they've um, kind of categorized this method is with FOIL, okay? So F O I L. And essentially what you're doing is you're multiplying the first two terms together, 
these two guys and you get the 15 X squared. Then you're multiplying the outer guys, which are these two. And then you get positive 21 X. Then you multiply the inner terms, which are those two, and you get the negative 10 X. And then you finally multiply the last two terms, but you get the negative 14, okay? And then if you do have like terms, you can combine them. So like these are regular X's and those are regular X's. So I can just basically count how many regular X's I have in total. And since you have 21, but you owe somebody 10, if you pay them off, you're only gonna have 11, right? So they just combine those like terms. You can use the calculator here. If your brain just shuts down when you're <laughs> combining like terms, you can just type in positive one in your calculator, minus 10, and it will tell you it's positive 11, okay? Um, I don't typically tell people that this is the best way to learn multiplication of polynomials because this only works when you have two terms times two more terms. If you have three terms in your polynomial or seven terms in your polynomial, this doesn't work. There's more than just the first, the outer, the inner, and the last. There's like tons of inners and outers, okay? Um, so this method is not particularly my favorite, okay? There are a couple of other methods that we'll cover, um, and I prefer one of them over the others. I, I do one, and then there's another one that if you're going to do something different for me, do that one. <laughs> so I do distribution, but I do distribution a little bit differently, okay? So I'm going to actually rewrite this um, product here and then show you how I get from here to here without having to do all of this stuff, okay? I literally use arrows. So I just make sure that I take this guy and I distribute it to both of those. And then I take the next guy and I distribute it to both of them. Now that method of distribution works no matter how many terms are in the front or however many terms are in the back, okay? So what I do is I take three times the five X, three X times the five X and I get this. And then take three times the positive seven and I get this term. Then I move on to the next one and I do those two, I get the negative 10. And then finally those two and I get the negative 14, okay? Um, and so that just helps me to do it a little bit faster. I don't have to rewrite anything. I don't have to do all these little products all separated. Um, it just helps me to get to here a whole lot quicker, okay? Um, and this method works no matter what the polynomials look like. So I'm going to draw one or write one, actually. I'm going to create one. <laughs> Let me see. X plus five and then X squared minus three X minus two, something like that. Okay. So if I follow that distribution method that I introduced, you're basically taking this X and you're gonna multiply it by all three of those guys, okay? So then X times X squared, you add those exponents, right? Then X times negative three X, I'm gonna add those exponents, but one and one makes two, right? X times this guy is just negative two X. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to distribute that positive five to everybody as well. Okay, so then I get positive five X squared. I get negative 15 X and then I get negative 10. And then the last thing you do is combine any like terms that you might have. So for me, there's only one X cubed here. So that's not going to get combined. It's just going to get rewritten. Then I have X squareds here and X squareds there. So it's actually a negative three plus five. And that will tell me how many X squareds I have. So negative three plus five is actually positive two. So I have positive two X squareds. And then I have negative two X and negative 15 X. So all the X's are negative, right? That means I'm gonna have a total of negative 17 x's and then finally the last guy here is the constant so it's all only one so it's just going to come down okay and then this would be your final answer for that product okay but that method works regardless of how many terms there are okay um 
It says a vertical arrangement can be helpful. To me, that is more confusing than anything else. Um, but I think what they're referring to is this. When you multiply this out, notice how I put all of the blue terms there when I distributed the X, right? But then when I distributed the five, all these pink terms I put next to it, didn't I? What they're saying is instead of writing the pink terms for the second step over on the side, you can align them under here with their light terms, okay? So since my next term should have been positive 5x squared, I could have that positive 5x squared underneath the other x squared. Then when I moved on to get that one, I would have gotten an x term. I can put that underneath the existing x term. And then finally, when I multiply those, I get a constant. So you just put that one on the side. And then what happens is, is when you have to combine like terms, everybody's already lined up in their like terms, right? So you get the same exact answer. It's just that maybe that um, arrangement of one on top of the other might help you see it a little bit easier, okay? So that's just their, um, I guess, helpful hint to do it that way. Now, another method that I've seen people do is the box method. And that's where I don't wanna do it with something this long. So I'm gonna do it with that previous problem that we had since we already know the answer. Okay, so we had a problem like this. And so what I've seen people do is they've made a box and since I'm only going to have two terms, I'm going to make two boxes going this way, put my minus two. And since I have two terms over here, I only need two boxes going in this way as well. And you put those on the top, 5x and positive 7. Okay. So if I would have had three terms here, I would have made three boxes going down, right? And if I had three terms over here, I would have made three boxes going this way. Okay, and then it's just a matter of filling in the boxes with the products. So this box means I would multiply 5x and 3x. And then this box means I would multiply the 3x and the positive 7, giving me positive 21x. And then in here, I would have to multiply the negative 2 times the positive 5x. And then finally, this one, I would multiply the negative 2 times the positive 7. And then in this box, you can see most times, as long as these are in order, descending order, all of the common terms will usually line up in a diagonal, okay? And so you notice that these do line up in a diagonal, right? The X's that are like. So you end up with that 15 X squared. If you combine these two numbers, you end up with the positive 11 X's and then the minus 14 which is exactly what we had in when we did it before, right? With the foil, okay? Now it doesn't matter if you put the three X and the minus two this way, and then the five X plus seven that way, you can also switch them and you'll still get the same answer. The only thing that's gonna be different is that the 21 X will be in this box and the negative 10 X will be in that box. But when you combine them, they're still gonna turn out to be positive 11 X, okay? So I've seen lots of students do it this way, and this is perfectly fine. Me, when you see me working through the problems, I will always do it this way, okay? So if you do this on the test or you do this on the test, totally okay. But as you see me working them out, I will be working them out the top way, okay? Using all the little arrows. Does anybody have any questions so far? I have not asked. If, it, is it, if it's like more than two, do you just do the same thing like with? Mm -hmm. I'll set it up. I'm not going to do the whole thing unless you want me to. No, that's okay. time. <laughs> <laughs> so you have two choices. You can put the two terms going this way or you can put the two terms going this way. Because I'm running out of paper, I think I'm going to put the two terms here so I don't have to go so far down, right? So I'm going to put the X here. And then I'm going to put the positive five here. Okay. But then that means that the three terms has to go across this way. So the X squared will go there. 
the negative 3x will go there, and then the negative 2 will go there. And I'll do the multiplication, and then you'll see it comes out the same. So this one times that one is x cubed. This one times that one is 3x squared. x times negative 2. Then positive 5 times x squared. Then positive 5 times negative 3x and then positive five times negative two. And so then you'll see that these guys line up, right? And then these guys line. Up. So you have the X cube, oops, I made a typo there. Nobody mentioned anything. <laughs> Just FYI, if you do something like that, um, let me know. I like to give people bonus points whenever they catch an error, okay? It helps both of us, right? You get a point on the test or whatnot, and I don't have errors in my notes, right? <laughs> so that we're all doing and learning the right thing. Okay, so if you do catch um, an error, let me know and I'll, I keep track of how many points everybody has so for their test, okay? I seen it, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> Next time, be brave, you're good. <laughs> I am not offended at all, I swear. <laughs> everybody makes mistakes and after you've looked at as many numbers as i do in a day you're prone to like make gobs of errors so it happens okay so we have the x cubed these guys with the x squared they do still give me this right and then these guys with the x's they do still give me that value and then the negative 10 is still there right so it does work with the multiple um polynomials okay so I do have a lot of students that prefer that box method. For me, it's way more writing than just doing the little arrows. So typically I do it this way, but this is totally okay. If that works for you, use it, okay? Dun, dun, dun. I think we're almost done. We are, we're at the practice now. So for these, I'm gonna keep, um, I'm going to pause and resume the video just because I don't want to be recording us just in silence, right? <laughs> so what I want you to do is I want you to try these problems, okay? And then I will talk about them as I record, okay? But I'm going to stop recording right now for a moment just to give you some time to try them. And then I will uh, resume and go over them, okay? But actually try them. Don't just sit there in silence and wait for me to do it. Okay, I've mentioned to you guys before, y'all have got to put in the work and the practice. Okay, if you want to know it, you've got to do it. Okay, so try those three problems. And I'm going to put myself on mute and I'm going to uh, pause the video. So, all three of these are just regular distribution where you just have one term to distribute to everybody, right? So, for instance, here it's just this one term that you're gonna to distribute to all three of these terms, okay? So when I multiply the three X times the X squared, I will get three X to the what power? Three, yes, you got it. Okay, and then when I multiply three X to the negative five X, a positive times a negative will give me negative 15 and then X to the what power? Square. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. I can see you guys too. So if you put your fingers, um, Adil was putting his fingers. So <laughs> if you don't want to come off of mute. Um, and then the three X finally times the positive one would be what? Three X. Mm -hmm. Now, do I write it like this or do I put something in the middle? Oh, plus. Yes, good, good. After that first one, there should always be a plus or a minus, right? If you get positive, you put the plus, and if you get negative, you put the minus, okay? Um, but yeah, that's it. This is it for that one. How many of you got that one right? Give me a thumbs up in your video. Yeah, okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna do this one. The only thing different with this one is that the number here has got a negative, right? That's really the big difference here. So I am going to do negative 2 times positive 4. So that's going to give me negative 8. And when you multiply these variables, what exponent do you end up with? Cubed. Yes. And then finally, we're going to do negative 2y times the last one. And what should I end up with? Negative 10. 
almost. 10. You're doing a negative two times a negative five, oh, right? That. Right, so we get positive 10, y. Okay, that one was a little bit tricky. Good, good, good. How many of you got that one correct? Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Okay, and then this one is only different in that it's got, instead of the left distribution, right? This one's backwards, it's got the right distribution, okay? So you're gonna take this whole thing again, but you're gonna multiply it going in this direction, okay? So what do I end up with? I have five times negative 5t, which is negative 25t. And then we have negative 1.5t squared times a negative 5t. Now I do know I'll end up with positive, but I don't know what number. So 7.5. 7.5, yeah, 7.5, good. And then t to what power? Three. Yes, three, good. And those are not like terms, oh, but look what it says. It says to write the result in standard form, right? They didn't tell me how they wanted me to write the others, so I didn't mess with them. But for this one, it does want the answer in standard form. Is this in standard form? No. No, mm -hmm. why not? Because the- no, Descending quickly? Yeah. Yeah, they have to be in descending, which means the one with the biggest exponent has to go in the front, right? So that positive 7.5, has to go on the front and then the negative 25 T. Now you'll notice that I write my T's with like a little hook at the bottom, right? That's because I don't want them to get confused with my plus signs, okay? So I do always write my T's like that just so that I don't confuse myself. Because a lot of times when you're writing math, people will do the wrong next step, not because their brain is doing a process wrong, but it's just because they don't even recognize their own writing, okay? So <laughs> try to write as neat as possible. It happens. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, for that one. Did anybody get this one right? This one was a little bit trickier. Awesome, awesome, yay. Okay, perfect. Now I do have more. I wanna see how many more I got. I've got two more pages. So I'm going to put the video on pause again and then try these. Okay, when you're done, just give me a thumbs up in the camera. Um, and then you, if you need to refer back to anything that we covered, you can always come back and fast forward to whatever you need in the video. Okay, so for the first one, again, I'm not sure which method you used, whichever method you used, hopefully you get the same result that I do, okay? But I'm going to use a distribution method so I'm gonna take this 2x and distribute it to both of those guys. So for 2x times 5x, I get 10x squared. For 2x times positive one, I get positive 2x. And then now I'm gonna take the negative six. So I'm taking the whole thing with the sign. So the negative six times 5x is negative 30x. And then the negative six times the positive one is a negative six. And then I do have to combine my like terms. So this term and this term both have a regular X. So I'm gonna put those together. And that will actually give me a little bit less negatives. And so I end up with this result. Did anybody get this one correct? Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, this one is a lot longer. So I'm gonna actually start writing in my numbers down here just because it is lengthy. You have three things times three more things. So chances are I'm gonna end up with like nine terms here, okay? So let's go ahead and distribute the X squared first. So that will give me X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. X squared times positive two X will give me positive two X, but to the third power, right? Cause you've got these two and then that one. And then X squared times three is gonna be three X squared. I'm gonna switch my color just so you can see that I'm now distributing this one, okay? 
So now I'm going to take the negative x and distribute that. So negative x times x squared is negative x to the third. Negative x times positive 2x is negative 2, but x squared. And then negative x times positive 3 is negative 3x. I've got one more um, to put in here, and that's to take the negative 4 and distribute it. So negative 4 times x squared, negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times positive 2x is negative 8x. And then negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12. And now it's just a matter of combining my like terms. So there is only one x to the fourth here in the whole string, right? It's just this one. And so I'm just going to rewrite that one down. Then now when I move to the x cubed, you actually have positive 2x cubed and then minus an x cubed. How many x cubes are here? just one there's like an invisible one coefficient right so you've got positive two take away one that's going to leave me with the positive one x to the third you just don't ever write that one there okay um if you do write one x cubed inside WebAssign, it will tell you your answer is correct but that you don't need to write the one in the front okay um now for the x squared we have quite a few we actually have positive 3x squared, negative 2x squared, and negative 4x squared. So you've got to um, go from left to right, essentially. So positive 3, take away 2, that's going to leave you with the positive 1. And then positive 1, take away 4, is going to leave you with the negative 3x squared. You can also type that in the calculator. You can type in a positive 3 then minus two, and then minus four, and it still gives you that negative three, okay? Then we can move on to the x's. So I've got an x here and an x there. That will give me negative 11x. And then finally, I have um, this constant in the back. And so I'm just gonna rewrite that constant. And this is already in its descending order and everything. So that is the final answer. Anybody get this one right? This one was a long one. Okay, one guy, that's good. <laughs> one is better than none. Definitely practice on that one. That one's a long one. The longer the problems are, the more chances you have right to make an error, so. Just be very careful. My biggest advice is to make sure that you write down things properly. Always double check because I do that all the time. I just write something down wrong. Um, and then two, don't rush because I do that as well. If I rush, I'm bound to make an error than if I just try to go slower. Okay. So last one in here is, is this one. And so we're gonna, I'm going to do it the exact same way. I'm going to take the 2x and distribute it. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times minus 3 is minus 6x. Then I'm going to distribute the positive 3. So positive 3 times 2x is positive 6x. And positive 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. But I do need to um, combine like terms. These are both like terms, but what happens when I combine them? Do they cancel? Mm -hmm. They get zero, right? And you never have to write zero in there. So like we usually just cross them because they do cancel, okay? Um, so I just have the 4x squared and then the minus nine. Is this in standard form? Yes. Mm -hmm. You've got a power two and then a power zero, right? So it does go down. So this is in descending order. So it's good. Anybody get that one right? That one wasn't as long, right? So was, chances were higher. <laughs> okay, we got one last page with two problems only. 
And this one is tricky. If you make the error that I think you're going to make, that's okay, because that's a teaching point. But I'm gonna let you do it without giving you any hints, okay? So try these two and then I will cover them when, when I come off of um, mute and come off of, of pause. Now here, I have a question. Anybody for this problem get this? Okay, this is not correct, but it's the most common answer I will get for this problem, okay? And I tell people, if you learn anything in this class, is this is not the answer, okay? It's one of those big ones <laughs> that if you go to the next class and you're still doing this, I'm in trouble, okay? <laughs> so make sure that when you get to the next class that you know now that that's not it, okay? What we have to remember is what a square represents, right? When you see x squared, it's because that is representing x times x, right? Same thing like when you see five squared, it's five times five. And so that's where we know the 25 comes from, right? So we have to remember that this simply means that you have two X minus five times itself, okay? And once it's written like this, you know how to multiply these guys now, right? And so you start doing all of your distribution. Okay, and you'll recognize that I'm going to get a little bit more than just the 4x squared and the negative 25 or positive 25. Okay, so we're going to take our 2x and we're going to distribute that. So the first one is 4x squared. The next term is negative 10x. Then I'm going to take this whole negative 5 and I'm going to distribute it to those two. So then I get negative 10 X and then I get that positive 25, okay? The thing is, is that these don't cancel. Even though it's 10 and 10, it's not one positive and one negative this time, is it? They're both negative. So when they're both negative, I actually end up with a negative 20 X. And so now you have this middle term that wasn't there if you did it the other way, right? The most common thing I'll get is that people will square these individually. And I have to point out what you're using. This is what your brain is doing. There's a rule that says if you have this, you can give each term the exponent. There is a rule like that, right? A power rule that says you can do this. The only thing is, is that rule only works if there's multiplication in between them or division in between them. That rule does not apply when there's a plus or a minus in between them, okay? And since here I have a minus sign in between these two guys, I can't just square the two X and square the five, okay? So if you did it, it's okay. I mean, this is the time where you're supposed to make your errors, right? <laughs> and you get them all, the kinks worked out before you take the test, okay? So if you got that, that is totally okay. I get it. It's a common, common, common thing that happens, okay? Um, this one is a little bit trickier because how many of them do I have now? I've got three, right? Three of those things. So if I apply the rule of an exponent, that means I have three X minus threes in parentheses. And so then here you really have to follow, what are they called? Your orders of operations, right? And in your order of operations, it tells you you multiply, but you go left to right. So essentially what I have to do is I have to multiply these two together. And then whatever I get, I'm gonna have to multiply that by the last guy. Okay, but I first have to figure out what's going to go in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that distributing stuff again. So x times x, then x times negative three. Then now distribute the negative three. So I get another negative three x, but a positive nine. And then these two can actually combine. They're both negative. 
So I actually get x squared minus 6x and then a positive 9. And I'm just going to scoot over that minus 3 because I gave myself a little too much space. And I really shouldn't put an equal sign there because that's just kind of like my little side work, right? So then now I have to multiply these two and I am gonna do the distributing again, but I have three things I have to distribute to these two guys. So I'm gonna start off with the X squared. So I end up with X cubed minus three X squared. Then I'm going to move on to the negative 6x. And I get negative 6x squared, but then a positive 18x. And then finally distribute that 9. So I get positive 9x and negative 27. And then from here, we'll combine all of those like terms, right? So there's only one x cubed in the whole string. But I do have negative 3x squared and negative 6x squared. So we get negative 9x squared. And then finally, the x's can also be combined. So that's 27x's. And I have this constant negative 27. Is this in standard form? Mm -hmm. The power goes from three to one to none, right? It keeps going down. So this is in descending order. Those are the final answers there. Okay, anybody happen to get that one right? I know it was different. Oh yeah, I got one. Okay, cool. And again, you could have used the boxes on this. It's just, if you did use the box, you would have had to use the box method for these two to get this response and then do this and this in the box method. And then you would get this, okay? So you can do the boxes, but that's it. That's all I have for you today. We didn't take a five minute break, but we actually finished a little bit early. Um, normally, if I don't take the five minute break, I would cut you out at 940. So we're like seven minutes early, but I do ask that you take um, these next few minutes if you haven't finished the orientation to go ahead and get started on that. Um, just because you need to finish it up so that you can start practicing these things in your homework. Um, the homework is not due until we're about to take that unit test, but still it's so much better, I promise you, to do your homework right after you've learned something than to wait and then go try to do it later. Okay, so just try to get through that Cengage um, activation step in your orientation. That way you can start working on those homeworks. Okay, if you do get stuck, as soon as you get to the part where you sign up for Remind, you can start texting me. Okay, so if you get stuck on anything, just text me and then I'll kind of walk you through it. Okay, um, other than that, you guys have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, will you pause the video? Oh.